All right, check the shop. Oh, okay. Cyber Monk. Right, I'm not gonna lie, that's pretty cool. Wait, 22. Wait, what? I'm sorry. Excuse me. Fate. Listen, this is a cool skin. Is it 22 bucks worth? Sorry, $30 worth marked down to 22? It's a bundle? I don't give a fuck if it's a bundle. No voice lines and, and shit are very low tier items. Weapon charms are a little bit higher tier. Skins are the top tier. This isn't worth $22. It's not worth it to me. I doubt it's worth it to the average consumer. The Battle Pass is a very, very fair system. It's actually a lot of value for what it's worth. The skins, though, in the shop so far, this is supposed to be a $20 package. Or sorry, $19 package knocked down to $15. If you look me in the eyes and tell me that's a $15 skin, you're, you're fucking with me. So, for those in chat that are making the argument, well, it's a bundle. Well, it's a bundle, you don't have a choice. If I wanted to buy just the skin, I can't. So you have to buy it as a bundle. The bundle is $22. Is $22. If I just want the skin, where well, the skin is actually the thing that matters, the, the charms are typically kind of cool, but like, the skin is now $20 because it's a bundle. That is overpriced. And I would be shocked if you sell a ton of that. And I think if anything, one of the biggest complaints is gonna be this, rightfully so. I think the Battle Pass complaints were overblown. Um, honestly, for a Battle Pass, it's a pretty pretty good fair value. This is bullshit. This is two Battle Passes. This is actually, that's more than two Battle Passes. This whole line was 10 bucks. Fine. This one package being $22 and you're saying, oh, you're saving money. Together, That's dog shit. Yes. Yeah, y'all gotta figure this out because here's a good example. So if someone says, oh, it's a bundle, but you kind of proved the point though, because this bundle is $22, but the skin for just this hog is 19. So if we apply the same logic, this bundle is, is $22, the skin is 19, and the rest of these are thrown in. That's fair, not bad. I'm actually cool with that. But the price, the big one down here. Now let's say it was 10 for the skin, you throw some stuff in, maybe make it 12. Sure. This for 10, maybe. I'd consider it, not doing it for 20. Because here's the thing you have to think about. Long term, people are going to buy more skins if they're at a cheaper price. We're charging a premium up the top and hoping to make more off it. That's kind of like, uh, I feel I feel like you're overestimating what people are going to pay for skins. Like, they're not to that level. Like, Overwatch skins are, are amazing, but not every skin is that good. This is a good skin. It's not as good as, say, Reinhardt Conductor. Why is this skin so much better? The choo-choo noises, the hammer's cool. Like this is just, it came out on Christmas. It was an amazing design. Everything was perfect and fucking cool with it. That is a great skin. This is a good skin. Is this a $20 skin? Fuck no. And I'm really scared, not only for myself, but for other people. Uh, what happens when there is a skin that that's good? Is it now 30? Is it 50? I don't see I don't see a lot of people buying these. I'll be real with you, I just don't. Said you can't be a completionist anymore. Well, that the idea of being a completionist went out the window this the second this went free to play. Honestly, completionist, like, hey, God love you. That's awesome. I'm happy you have something you enjoy. But completionist for a free to play game when it should be trying to make money and constantly generate revenue, so it's always getting content and always getting new things, uh, is just a stupid thing to hold back for. Like, it's, it's, I, I don't mean that for you. I mean, like, on a de design side, that should not be something they even consider. Um, in any way, shape, or form. But the fact that it can be done in Overwatch 1 shows how slow the content trickle was.
I think five, I think five would be good for like something like this. Like something like maybe this. This is like a five dollar skin. It's like nothing crazy. It's okay. It's alright. It's like epic. It's like it's a decent. It's not bad. Cheaper. Not top tier. Alright. Not too bad. This should be like ten. If this was ten, I'd consider it. Uh, something like this for twenty two? Is not without a sense of irony. Like, like thinking voice line. Like, okay, how much? Let's actually talk about this real quick. How much are voice lines in Overwatch 2? An emote is five bucks. A voice line is a dollar. I don't think emotes should be that much more than a voice line. Like, I vo emotes and a voice lines are pretty similar in a lot of ways. A dollar for a voice line? Fine. Not that bad. Highlight intros are seven bucks? Like, I feel like this is scaled wrong. I feel like voice lines being a dollar is fair. Souvenirs are five bucks? Nobody's gonna buy these. They're, they're not, they're not that cool. Like, it's like, okay, it's fine. It's cool. I will say, okay, I'll say it's cool, but it's not five bucks cool. Like, I'm on fire. this is like something that like, throw for a dollar like dude. Ah, dude. I'm on fire. like weapon charm is probably five bucks i'm good with five bucks for weapon charm weapon charms are actually like something you see all the time those are cool these emotes like two maybe three if you wanted to be a little bit on the on the greedier side hero poses being three i feel like this is like one or two voice lines being one is actually the most fair part of this whole thing and then highlight intros are seven. I'd say like at most five. I don't know. I even think five is a little bit of a stretch. It's a bit of a stretch. It's not something you're seeing all the time. You're only gonna see it once in a while. Ah, uh, you underestimate the power of. I'm uh, sorry. How dumb people are. People will defend or def spend that kind of money. Yeah, but here's the problem though. Okay, like you can probably con a couple suckers out of some shit, right? Like you could probably con a few suckers out of buying like a twenty dollar Roadhog skin. But if you made it $10, you would sell to way more people and you'd make that money up, you know? Like you would more than make that money up like over time. So like, it's not like you have to worry about like something. So if I'm making a product, right? Like let's say I make birdhouses. If I'm selling birdhouses for $10 a piece and I got a hundred orders that come in and I can only make 25 a month. Well, what you have to do is you have to ad adjust your pricing so to the how much you can make a month. So let's say I make 25 a month. I would double my price. From I would go, let's say I was making, I was paying $50 for a birdhouse. I was making 25 a month and I had 100 orders. Well, I now charge $50 a birdhouse. Now my amount of orders went from 100 down to 50. Right? I'm on fire. Over, it should technically equal up to how much you're increasing your price. The demand should come down. Because there's, of course, there's supply and demand. But there's also price. There's also the third number of price. So if I can only produce 25 birdhouses a month and I get 50 orders now at $50, I can actually go even higher because I can only make 25 a month. And if I get 50 orders a month, that's 25 orders I can't fulfill. So now I bring the price again to $100. Now I brought the price to $100, theoretically, because I doubled the price, the demand should drop. And now I'm only now I'm only getting 25 orders for birdhouses a month. I can make 25 birdhouses a month, and I'm making $100 a birdhouse. That way, you're making $100 a birdhouse through 25 people and, and 25 orders. This doesn't apply to skins because you don't have to worry about producing a product. The product is a digital product and can be made to anyone at any time. So you remove the X factor equation of trying to make your uh, your demand and your production the same. Production is, is already finished. You can do unlimited production. Production's finished. So now you have demanded price. So by lowering price, demand goes up. So depending on where you can find that medium, if a lower price will drive a much higher demand, there's a middle ground in there. I feel like right now the price is so high that you're gonna have a low demand and make like, let's say 
thousand dollars. Let's say you make a thousand dollars, but if you lowered the price by half, you could make ten thousand dollars because you didn't double it. You I got the multiplied it by edition, twenty um, because all of a sudden to... now all these people can Wait, afford it or want to buy it. Well, because it, that only that model applies when you have to produce a product and the product's already produced. It's just multiply, it's just replicated endless times because it's a, a, a digital product that can be unlocked. There's a lot of companies that operate on this, especially digitally. So I don't know, dude, like sell one dude for 500 bucks or 1 million people for a dollar. Yeah, that's, that's a pretty simple way of putting it, sure. When you're talking about adjusting prices, they have a really hard time increasing prices if they don't sell enough. Well, actually, you make a good point. They would have a hard time increasing prices. So I wonder if they're starting high to then come down so they don't like get people mad. You know, it's like, oh, they raised the price. What the hell? I, I think that's very much in the realm of possibility is they're starting high and then bringing it down, like to quote, listen to people. Um, like they're leaving it high because not many people have rocked the boat yet. You know, like, oh, the, bo the, road hasn't, the boat hasn't been rocked yet. Like leave the prices how they are. Let it kind of go. But then if people get really mad, okay, let's take it down a bit. And it's like, oh, okay, they listened. They listened. Like, they brought the prices down. They I, they incorporated that ahead of time. It's kind of like when you're private selling an item. Let's say I want to sell my car for $1,000. When you put a car up for sale for $1,000 as a private seller, you know people are going to come in and negotiate. So you don't come up and go, oh, I want $1,000 for the car because people are going to go, I'll give you $500. And then you might end up getting $750. What you end up doing is you're saying, I want $1,500 for the car. Someone comes Thanks. in and says they want $1,000 or they want to go $750. And then you can either meet at $1,000 or you actually get a little bit higher than what you wanted so you start the price higher and then bring it back down over time with the pr blizzard has had i don't think that that's actually the out of the realm of possibility but apparently i i don't know like uh, there's a lot there's i don't think anyone's i don't think there's been enough of a fuss about it yet for people to really take notice if that makes sense but i don't know anyways man anyway, top 500 sucks uh fucking the shop is overpriced as shit uh yeah. Flats is flexing his business degree. Listen, I didn't go $130,000 in fucking debt to not know anything, okay? I had I got to learn fucking something for that amount of money. God damn, dude.